We always like to get started very early in the spring to make that initial pass, but we're not even getting close to planting then. In organic field crop production, as with conventional production, weed management starts early, prior to planting. In this video, we'll hear from several organic farmers about the steps they take to get ahead of weeds early through tillage passes, seedbed preparation, and careful timing of planting. Most people are out there, as soon as the ground's dry enough, they'll get the plant in, but that's not when you want to be there in organic crop production because the problem is, is if you get in too early, the weeds are already going on there and you need to get that first flush and then the second flush of weeds, you need to take care of those before you get the, the seeds in the ground because you can cover them with a field cultivator, you can cover them with a tying weeder, and you can take care of the whole ground there. But once you plant in there, then it limits your ability to, <clears throat> to get in there and really work it over. When we look at starting to plant beans, we're gonna look at, we'll go out and um, use a Krauss disc and we'll hit our stalks Generally, if we're going into corn stalks, we'll hit them early, like um, about a week before we think we're going to plant. Um, I like to get a good weed flush, let the, the weeds germinate, and get that first spring, spring flush. Uh, the first thing I'll, I'll do is around when the ground gets ready, I'll go out and disc corn stalks down, try and get them mulched up a little bit, a little finer, so that I don't have too much trash to uh, compete with when, when planting or, or doing harrowing or cultivating and, and that sort. As far as tillage before the corn, that's the year when I, the only year of the three that I do full width tillage, and I disc it as early as it's fit to try and make sure that I kill all that clover. That gets a flush of weeds started. And so maybe 10 days later or so, it, it's starting to get green, so I'll field cultivate it, kill all those weeds, that'll start another flush of weeds. And then maybe it's another 10 days or two weeks before I plant, so I'll hit it again with the field cultivator just before planting. So I've got two really good flushes of weeds, uh, hopefully before I plant that corn and then then the tine weeder um, and row crop cultivator will take care of anything that comes up after that, theoretically. We like to have corn follow a small grain or a clover alfalfa sodded crop. Uh, we use a John Deere mulch master to tear up that sod. We've also in the past used just a chisel plow with sweeps. We don't like to moldboard plow in this area because we have some steep hills, but we like to t tear that clover alfalfa up in end of April, first part of May, start with a clean, fairly clean tilled field. Um, we'll typically, we'll hit it with that chisel plower, mulch master, disc it, and then field cultivate it. So we have a fairly black, fairly even work down seed bed with basically no, no big weeds ahead of you. Um, you want to start out, you know, so with a clean, with a clean field on a clean base. If we're coming out of a cover or a plow down, um, usually we'll start with a, a moldboard plow, and then uh, we come back and hit it with a like a brilliant cultipacker once to two times, and then we we plant right into that. While other farmers are planting corn following alfalfa or clover, Nelson Smith of Brighton plants soybeans after alfalfa. So one of the first jobs of the spring for him is disking that alfalfa. Well, if we're going for a soybean year, we've got alfalfa as our previous crop. So, and we leave it <clears throat> until spring to tear it up. So we're disking that first thing. As soon as you can get in there, you want to disk that up because you need to tear up that sod and get the alfalfa torn up and then <clears throat> you'll let it sit for a couple weeks because that will give you the chance that any weeds that are right there will attempt to to grow so they're going to sprout and then you're going to hit it again with a field cultivator which going over that with a field cultivator then smooths it out breaks up any uh, chunks that you had from the disking because the disking can depending on if it's too wet or not can make chunks out there the field cultivator will smooth it up and then <clears throat> occasionally depending on your weather if it's raining 
and you can't get it in right away, we also like to plant a little later because that'll give us a chance to get one more flush of weeds. Eric Madsen farms near Audubon in west central Iowa, and he and many of the other organic farmers we talk to like to plant later in the spring because warmer soil temperatures mean corn and soybeans can emerge more quickly, reducing the amount of time the seed spends in the soil until germinating and giving the crop a head start on weeds. In our area, we typically don't even think about planting until probably the 20th of May. Um, you really want to plant into a warm, dry forecast that in our experience, um, I guess everybody says planting date, you know, May 10th for corn. Yeah, that's a goal. But in our experience, we've had far greater yield reductions due to weeds versus planting date that it, it's just everything seems to be harder if you, that corn it doesn't, can't come up out of the ground fast. Um, this past year we had corn that you could row in four days and that was probably the easiest weed control we've ever had. We could get out there, I believe I was rotary hoeing on like day nine and cultivating on like day 20 and you really want that corn to shoot out of the ground fast and get a, get a head start on weeds. You want to delay the planting enough time so that the crop emerges faster than the weeds. You want the crop up. The sooner you can get the crop out of the ground, the sooner you can start rotary hoeing and cultivating. You know, in this area, typically the last week of May, first week of June on soybeans is a typical time when a lot of beans get put in the ground. There, in that case, you can get your bean out of the ground in seven to ten days at the worst case scenario, if not faster. And the sooner you can get in there, then you can start rotary hoeing and then stay ahead of the weeds that way. Another common theme among organic farmers was avoiding planting right before a rain, which can cause weeds to germinate quickly in the upper soil profile, giving them a jump on the crop. I forget who told me that, but they said they, if, if it's going to be raining, you're better off just putting the, the planter in the shed and waiting till after the rain, just because it ends up germinating everything. And so you don't get that jump on the seed that you're planting. You want to plant into a warm, dry forecast versus a cold, wet forecast. Kind of goes against the conventional theory of plant right before a rain. You know, hurry up and plant before it rains. It's kind of the opposite of that. I like to put my seed where the moisture is and try and keep those weeds from, from establishing quickly um, and keeping the topsoil more dry and, and light. Ideally, you would plant and it wouldn't rain for a week or 10 days because then that top part of the soil again would stay dry. Your corner beans coming down from deeper would have a chance to emerge and before the shallow seeded weeds have a chance to get moisture and start coming. Most organic farmers also make a tillage pass just before planting to try to set weeds back and give the crop another leg up on the competition. I think it is very important to um, make a tillage pass of some sort just before you plant. I know vegetable people and others will do the, the stale seed bed approach where they you know, don't want to plant more weeds just before the, you plant the crop. Uh, I try and hit it just before planting. Yeah, the, the last cultivation you want to do just prior to planting because once you, you run that last cultivation through, you've taken care of all the weeds that are available to, to get after then. And that's when you want the corn or the soybeans to get in there and start going because they need to get a jump on those weeds and you've just knocked the weeds back and now you put the corn or the soybeans in there and that gives them the chance to, and the, soy, the temperature, soil temperature, and the moisture is all good at that time, or you wouldn't be planting, of course. If I'm gonna plow and cult a pack, I, I wanna kinda time that pretty close to when I'm gonna plant. Again, keeping, keeping our planter right behind finished pass field work. That gives that uh, soybean or the corn a chance to jump up and get going, and once you can get them up ahead, it's getting ahead of the weeds that'll make the biggest difference on your, whether you have a weedy patch or whether you have a good corn or soybean field. It's, you gotta get ahead of it and that gets you ahead of it by planting right after that second or final cultivation before you plant. You know you're starting all, all of your soil at a level playing field. You know your weeds haven't got to jump on you. 
and you also know that your plants um, are going to start at the same time, if not get a better start, because uh, or just planting right after you've cultivated. It's it's basically the, uh, the day before you plant. I'll, I'll take a field cultivator out and I'll field cultivate it. Um, typically, I, I try to make sure I don't have too many weeds that got way too big anyway. The smaller smaller weeds are all right, but uh, if they get bigger, then you have a little more issues. But I, I typically go pretty shallow with the field cultivator just to knock the weeds out and uh, get their roots up on top to dry out. Just before we plant, we'll go over it with the <clears throat> either the field cultivator, but now that we have the tine weeder, which is right behind me here, we can hit it with the tine weeder, which will smooth out the top which will loosen up any uh, seedlings that have started, the weed seedlings, and then we'll go for <coughs> the planting right after that. And after I get done the field cultivator, I'll run my harrow over it. Before planting, it's, it's mostly for leveling the ground out, breaking clumps up. If you got too big of clumps, you want to break your, your clumps up. Then I'll also come back and with the tine weeder right after the planting, either the day after or two days after at the most, go out and run over it and take the wheel marks out because the wheel marks have uh, pressed the soil back down on those weed seeds and now the weed seed is going to want to sprout. So if we get it loosened up again and air out that top of the ground, then we can get the <coughs> weed seeds that are just starting 